You decided to make yogurt at home and you bought some yogurt starter and have no idea what to do. Then keep watching and I'll show you how to go from this to this. Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. Maybe you're completely new to making yogurt, or maybe you've been making yogurt at home using store-bought as a starter and want to try something different. Either way, once you purchase your yogurt starter bacteria culture, you have to give those sleepy little critters a little time and love to grow your colony and get it thriving because really they've been frozen for who knows how long. It's really not difficult, but this is probably the hardest part of making yogurt. It's not even really hard. It's just time consuming because you have to make three batches of yogurt back to back to make sure the bacteria wake up and start to grow. And you have to make those three yogurt batches with no more than 24 hours between batches to keep your bacteria from dying. So make sure to start this when you have time, whether it's a holiday weekend or during a staycation. After that, it's super easy to keep up with it. FYI, we're talking about heirloom yogurt here. That means once you've cultivated your bacteria, you can keep making yogurt from it year after year, as long as you keep making regular batches or by making sure that you store some of that batch you made in a freezer if you aren't gonna make it at least once a week. Uh, the information in this video does not apply to direct set cultures. Those are once and done. So you can't keep them going forever. You might be able to get more than one use out of it, but it really does depend on the bacteria. So once you've got your start, started and ready to make yogurt, I've got a great video on making regular batches of yogurt with all kinds of detailed science-y information on the yogurt process itself. So be sure to check that out and I'll have a video link up at the end of this video to take you there. That video should answer a lot of questions you may have after watching this one, but if you do have questions, please be sure to ask them in the comments so I can help you out. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you find this information helpful. It really does help me to keep making more content that will be helpful to you. All right, let's get started then. In this video, I'm using a thermophilic bacteria starter. That simply means it likes to be warm. You could also do this with a mesophilic culture with some modification, but I'm just gonna concentrate on the thermophilic. When you're shopping for a culture, they have them listed by thermophilic or mesophilic. So you should know which kind you have purchased. So you have this little container, this little packet of essentially freeze-dried bacteria. And these guys have been sleeping for some time and they need a little boost to wake up and get going so they can turn your plain, ordinary milk into tasty, tangy, thick yogurt that's full of probiotics. And we do this by making three batches of yogurt with no more than 24 hours between each batch. This little pouch of starter contains about a half a teaspoon of starter and will give you two chances at starting yogurt in case the first attempt fails. So if you've never made yogurt before, make sure you only use half the packet and put the rest back in the freezer for later, just in case. You wanna make sure you have the starter culture, milk. I talk more about milk in my other video about making regular batches of yogurt, but if this is the first time, I would highly recommend using whole cow's milk to get started. I wouldn't use raw milk only because the raw milk has bacteria in it already and you don't want that to overtake these sleepy bacteria that you're trying to get strong from their weakened state. You're gonna need a pot, some sort of liquid or candy thermometer, and I'll put a link in the description to the one I've been using. This one works and it was fairly inexpensive, but honestly, if you can afford a more expensive one, ah, do it. You're gonna need a mason type jar and some sort of way to incubate your yogurt. If you have a yogurt maker, Great, but you don't need it to make yogurt. I use an Instant Pot, which is unbelievably easy and has a yogurt function on it, so even easier. Uh, but you can also use like a sous vide stick, your oven, a proofer, or even a cooler that you place your jars in with a warm water bath. I've even seen some people use a stand-up dehydrator. The key here is that thermophilic yogurts need to be in a warm 
environment. And that is between 95 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit for about five to 12 hours. So however you can make that happen, go for it. And I know we said we're talking about thermophilic, but if you do have a mesophilic yogurt, they need to incubate between 70 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit for 48 hours. Again, the rest of this process is based on using a thermophilic culture. From here, most of the process is the same as making regular batches of yogurt, but with different timing and different amounts of milk. First, you want to heat up one half cup of pasteurized milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure not to heat the milk too quickly and you wanna keep it from burning. You can do this by warming the milk on the lowest setting on your stove. Once it's reached 180 degrees Fahrenheit, allow the milk to cool to between 95 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Once cooled, pour the milk over half of the packet of starter culture and stir it well. Be sure to put the other half of that culture back in the freezer for the future, you know, just in case. Now you wanna cover the yogurt and let it incubate in whatever setup you've decided to use for five to 12 hours. After five hours, start checking the yogurt to see if it's starting to thicken up. If it hasn't yet, keep checking about every 30 to 60 minutes Minute, up to that 12 hour mark. Once it has set or it has been 12 hours, let it cool for two hours and then refrigerate for at least six hours. Now you gotta do this whole thing all over again two more times, but this time you're going to heat and cool one cup of milk. And instead of using the powdered starter, this time you're gonna take one tablespoon of that yogurt batch you just made and stir it into the cooled milk. Once you've completed the third batch, you now have a fully activated yogurt culture that you can continue to make yogurt from for a lifetime. Just be sure to freeze some after each batch you make. I typically use an ice cube tray and fill each spot with one tablespoon of yogurt. That way, if you can't make a batch within seven days of your last batch, you won't have to start all over again with this activation method. Seriously, you really don't want to have to do this over again. And if you're using an Instant Pot, be sure to check out my video on an even easier way to activate your starter. And don't forget to check out my video on making regular batches of yogurt that has way more details about the types of milk you can use and the skinny on all the different types of cultures. And be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you've got any ways that you like to activate your starter. And thanks again for joining me here on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.